Now let's embark on Mercedes-Benz's journey to zero prototypes with Lennart Mesters, Team Control System Analysis. This presentation unveils cutting-edge advancements in virtual prototyping for vehicle steering and chassis development. Discover how Mercedes-Benz bridges the gap between objective and subjective assessment using driving simulators and digital proving grounds. So, looks like the coffee has kept everybody's attention span and battery charged, so we can embark on a journey about uh, driving simulators and virtual prototyping at Mercedes-Benz. Once upon a time, I think everybody of us has faced a certain decision, and that is what career path do we want to actually pursue, and what do we want to do in the automotive industry. And uh, I actually had to do that quite recently, facing that decision, and wanted to uh, solve a technical challenge, as well as kind of challenge myself. So I joined the Mercedes-Benz doctoral program, and work now on virtual steering and chassis development regarding a real-time ride and comfort simulator. My name is Dana Mestes. Uh, I'm in the team control system analysis at Mercedes-Benz, which mainly shapes the digital development and uh, digital release testing for our company. So, of course, such a project always requires to work in cooperation with the university. So, shout out to the TU Dresden, which supervises the project and I'm currently working with. To give you a brief summary over my academic background, I studied mechanical engineering at the RWTH Aachen and the QUT Brisbane, and discovered in the early stages that I really like to work at the interface of electrical engineering, mechanical, and informatics, so moved forward to automation engineering, and I'm now working with driving simulators as a doctoral candidate of TU Dresden in electrical engineering and information technology. So what is the exciting project actually about? So what am I working on? So it, the goal of the project is basically to have a Mercedes-Benz, a real-time ride and comfort driving simulator to enable driving on a virtual proving ground to assess the ride and comfort of our vehicles. So where are we today? What is the system currently looking like? Or what was it before? Basically, so we have a already very successful high-performance ride simulator, which enables us to do a measurement replay of our own vehicles with respect to measurements we've taken, and also offline simulation results, and also to evaluate it or compare it to competitive vehicles we have measured so far. And we do that by making it one-to-one -one comparable to our rear vehicles. So currently, with respect to the replay, there's no washout in place. It is 100% comparable to what you would expect or what you would actually feel as a test driver in a real vehicle. And with respect to the visual environment, currently there is a video replay in place, which gives you then a perception of the movement of the vehicle. And this already is a success story in itself and leads to a significant reduction of testing weeks in real prototypes on our real proving ground in Immendingen. So now, of course, uh, the goal is to kind of cover some uncharted territory and to move towards driving the loop simulation, making it possible to experience that as the driver instead of the passenger. So as everybody knows, I think uh, ride comfort is highly customer relevant since most of the time, 90%, we're kind of driving on a straight road. We're keeping the vehicle centered in the lane. And there, of course, the on center steering feel is a very crucial component, what we want to especially add in this project as part of the steering feel to assess that kind of steering. And therefore, of course, you need to have a closed loop interaction with the vehicle model. And furthermore, the vehicle controllers, such as, for instance, the electric power steering, everybody has in their own vehicles. And for the future, then, of course, uh, steer wire as well. And to replace the video replay, since we're moving uh, in a virtual environment, we're exchanging that with a virtual proving ground to maximize the realism. And that project should uh, mainly basically answer two questions. And that's what kind of benefit does the real-time simulation provide for us at Mercedes-Benz? And also, what benefit does a steering wheel, so turning you from a passenger on the replay simulator into the driver on the replay uh, in, in the real time simulator, what benefit does do we achieve by that? And also, up to what frequency are we actually capable using that overall system since we are interested in the frequency from basically up to 50 hertz regarding ride comfort at Mercedes Benz?
So since the simulator is currently equipped to handle measurements and time series of offline simulations, we notably or logically need to add some components. And that's on the first place at the very core is our SIMPEC multi-body simulation models, which you can see in the upper right corner which basically form the very fundament uh, of, of the real-time simulation. But that also needs to be, of course, computed on a very powerful computing environment. So we opted for VI-grade and concurrent AutoHawk, a very powerful machine enabling the path to real-time simulation. But since we not only want to put the hexapod actually in the loop, but also the driver itself, uh, we need to add a steering wheel to basically be able to give uh, steering input and also receive the haptic feedback on the platform itself, evaluating the on center feeling when you're in the lane. And since we want to make it as realistically as possible and make it basically um, indistinguishable, let's say, from uh, the real proving ground, which we have in Immendingen, we integrated our digital twin of this proving ground in the graphical framework from RF Pro. So let's do a bit of a deep dive into what technical challenges came and uh, what, what I was basically facing the last one and a half years. So with respect to the real-time SIMPEC vehicle model, it is a model which originates already from our ride simulation team. There's no steering then included, since uh, they're basically evaluating ride as well from the passenger perspective. So the steering system needed to be included in the vehicle model, as well as, of course, um, virtual vehicle controllers, such as uh, the electric power steering. And all these things needed to be validated. And this is a uh, component-oriented full vehicle model. So you have like resembled every component of the vehicle you would have in the real one as well, with uh, over 250 degrees of freedom at the moment. And uh, there was, of course, a very big challenge to, to make that real-time capable, which uh, required a kind of multidisciplinary approach uh, to solve that. And there are, of course, special thanks to Dassault and VI-Grade for, for making it possible. So since the latest solver uh, advancement from the side of the Dassault systems with respect to SIMPEC, we achieved over 30% improvement with respect to the real-time performance. So regarding an integration step size of one millisecond, we now achieve a real-time factor on the iGrid's AutoHawk of 0.85. And that is, of course, not only due to the solver settings or the solver improvement itself, but also due to the powerful computing power of the VI-Grid AutoHawk, which we um, basically opted for the 16-core version with two 8-CPU core to, to the dual CPU uh, at a base frequency of 3.9 gigahertz. Since our uh, load cases are quite short, so we're not like driving for 10 minutes, 20 minutes on a driving simulator, we can basically uh, give it even uh, more potential by utilizing the turbo boost, since we're basically always uh, driving for 30 seconds, one minute over one lane, and then giving the system a few seconds of rest. And that's where the turbo boost basically gives you the last percent, uh, making, making it even more real-time capable and uh, achieving the overall 0.85 real-time factor. So Simbeck then in this system uses eight cores for the MBS model itself to compute those 250 degrees of freedom. One core is then required for the operating system, one for the I.O. exchange, so six are now left for making a parallel the simulation with uh, FMUs like, for instance, electric power steering or chassis controllers or experimenting with new tire models. And this is all done, or basically in hard real time, uh, the computation of the MBS model. And what was a very crucial decision for, or basically point for deciding and heading for the Vigrid AutoHawk is the integration of custom C code. So you can actually write on the machine some C code and compile it, run it in parallel to the MBS model, not only for unit conversions or coordinate system conversions, uh, but also like initialization sequences you need for the hardware or running like observers in parallel and other models to the MBS model itself. And with respect to the integration, I chose a point-to-point -point Ethernet connection to all the hardware components, the hexapod steering wheel, and the graphic uh, PC via Ethernet to uh, rule out um, traffic collision uh, on, on all, the, all the lines to, to the hardware components, so uh, which would then compromise kind of the performance of the overall system. So it's arranged in a start topology around the iRace AutoHawk. 
with respect uh, to making it uh, as realistically as possible, we chose to, to use our digital twin of the Immendingen Proving Ground, which is our Mercedes-Benz in-house proving ground in the south of Germany. And there, of course, we focus on the right and comfort evaluation straight roads, which you can see here on the left side. So here you have some example of different road surfaces, uh, some cleats and other stuff which we integrated in the graphics framework from RF Pro to make it as realistically possible as, uh, as, as, as possible. And it's a full representation of the proving ground, so it's not only the visual ones, but uh, we also have CRG data and we can also convert it to other formats for different tire models with respect to the road surface, which is of course necessary to provide the road excitation to the MBS model for ride and comfort evaluation. And on the latest graphics PC with an RDX 4090, we achieve over 240 frames per second at a 4K resolution, which makes it a very fluent uh, visual representation. And what I'm currently uh, working on in parallel is to have a full representation of the proving ground, since as you can see, there are only uh, some patches right now, so they're not interconnected, uh, but uh, we want to, to, to make it as immersive as possible by basically uh, also representing what's everything uh, in the distance and having a full uh, representation of the proving ground, what's, uh, yeah, what's, what's currently uh, in the making. So uh, since I've presented a lot of what's, what's happened so far, so where does that actually, um, where is that actually in the timeline? What's, what's done, what's ahead uh, to, to reach out for the goal of uh, real-time ride comfort development on a real-time simulator to shape our Mercedes-Benz driving character in real-time and extend thus the digital pre-development we already have. So I started in December 2022. Uh, the project runs until end of 25. And at the beginning, of course, was uh, planning of all the suitable hardware components to purchase and what software components I want to use. Then, of course, the optimization of the MBS model itself regarding its quality of the simulation and the real-time performance, and then integrating all these components like the steering wheel, the auto hawk, and all software components, and make it uh, yeah, very interconnected. So that's basically uh, where I am today. And the next big step is integrating the hexapod and working on the optimization of the overall drive in the loop, closed loop simulation, so you can actually ride with the kinesthetic feedback and not only on a, on a static simulator, basically. And since we want to evaluate uh, the overall success of the entire project, not only from an objective, but also from a subjective perspective, in the end, uh, there will be, of course, a final assessment uh, for the result generation and a test subject study on the simulator. So the validation, of course, is a very crucial step for saying, OK, it's a successful project, uh, or what do we still need to work on, what still needs to be optimized. And therefore, of course, we want to do that uh, in a similar manner, a similar fashion, how we assess the right comfort of our vehicles on the real proving ground. And that from an objective perspective is then, of course, done through measuring the accelerations on the seat rails uh, and, of course, on, on the steering wheel, especially focusing on the torque feedback of the steering wheel to see how well the, the on-center feeling uh, of the vehicle then is perceived on the driver in the loop simulator. And when that's compared to a rear vehicle and uh, basically all the iteration processes have undergone and successfully undergone, then we can start a test subject study uh, to assess actually the benefit of the driver in the loop regarding ride and comfort evaluation there. And that's what I want to do through uh, letting the test drivers tune our semi-active dampers on the real-time uh, ride simulator so uh, in a similar manner as they would do it on, a on the real proving ground, round, of course, and see how successfully they can do it. And on the other hand, of course, how well the acceptance with respect to the system is. So, yeah, a lot has happened so far from planning over optimization uh, and, of course, the integration of most of the components. So a big step, the integration of the Hexapod is still ongoing. And I guess everybody is pretty excited in the end how well the project went and uh, what will be done in the future with it. So uh, I guess you all are waiting for the results of the entire project. And that's where I need to keep you a bit, at least, waiting. But you should stay tuned and attend, of course, the next Zero Prototype Summit in 2025. So I hope we will all see each other next year in the same room. And uh, thanks a lot for the attention. If you have any questions, feel free. Oh, 
that's not. However, <laughs> uh, thanks a lot for the attention. And if you have any questions, you can, of course, ask them right now or reach out later in the day. Thanks.